Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, uh, so today we have a session with Vishwash Narayan on on Auto ML and Databricks. So firstly, for few minutes the, till the audience join, we will be going through the Azure Developer Community side. Is my screen visible? Vishwash? Yes, yes, uh, your screen okay. is so uh, Azure Developer Community is a new community uh, made in, I mean, when it's found in uh, January. So basically, we focus on the uh, on the things uh, to learn, network, and skill. We have a community, a big community now. We have more than nine, eight thousand members in our team, and we have been um, in in hundred plus cities till now, and we are reaching more and more cities. And if you are, if you want to join the community of your area, you can check it out. We have many communities. You can join them, join their meetup group. You can check our LinkedIn, Twitter, social groups, and all the events. If you want to attend any event, or if you also want to give any talk regarding Azure, regarding ML, Databricks, any, so you can go here in a speaker video. You can register for it, and our team will check it out. If you want to join us, join the community. If you want to be an organizer, do check it out. It's a very big community and like growing many in a fast way. Our community organizers, speakers, and yeah. So today, as we have a session on auto ML, so I would say uh, I would say Vishwash to start with the session and uh, let me introduce to the Vishwash. Uh, Vishwash is a yeah. Vishwash is a very nice uh, in Azure Auto ML. And as we said that we will be coming with a more session on Databricks and Vishwash is here with that. <laughs> and we will be soon having the session on Logic app and more on that. So yes, Vishwash. Yeah, thank you, Vilsi. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, I'm Vishwas Narayan. So you guys can reach me out on any of the social media platforms that has been listed here. And over the course of time, I've met a lot of people who have been in the data engineering world. And what I saw was there is an, there's an rapid rise in the way in which we are consuming data. And that's not just something like... Uh, I can say something like what I can say, like uh, uh, it can be something like as cool as taking up something like uh, an MPEG file and converting it into a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, and over the course of time, this is where your big data comes into the picture. And there was a need for your entire infrastructure to be changed over a course of time because that really saw a huge market gap between all the things something like i can say something like uh, there is a compute cluster which has a capacity to just have hundreds of calls over a course of time and now there's an increase and what to be done but apache spark came in and it really changed the way in which and Azure is something which is cool. It still provides the same old services which is there in the Databricks. But at the end of the day, what really matters to you is uh, that entire compute cluster being optimized for your need. And over there, let's just go on with it. So about me, I'm a podcaster. I do a lot of things. I'm also currently a research intern and Sutura Business Solutions. And I'm actually doing a lot of computer vision stuff there. And I'm still learning a lot. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. So now exploring Azure Cloud, I'm a big bibliophile where I give a reference to a lot of papers and a lot of things like, you know, like you can think of me coming up with something or the other new technologies at any time. Like I just love to learn. I just love to read the papers and the things like that. And that's what I always do. So Spark has always been an ecosystem of 
uh, technology which everybody desires to work on. There is Spark SQL plus data frames. I think I made a typo here. Sorry for that. It's all done by hand. So, so there is Spark SQL and data frames. There is streaming, ML lib, machine learning, which happens a graph type of computation where every time there is a tsunami way of hits that is happening on your server or the API is call, being called over millions of times or the billions of times. And this is where your entire infrastructure comes into the picture. And the, there are Spark Core APIs, which are simple as Python, R, Scala, SQL, and Java. Java is on which Spark is built on, or which there is an API layer, which calls the function, and there is an abstraction layer, which always talks beyond, hey, this is what we are doing, and this is what it is all about. And Azure Databricks is something cool. And over the course of time, when you see the amount of support which is giving the blob storage, the data lake, the SQL DB, this is the Kafka. And of course, the Hadoop is something which is pretty cool. And if you think of something like Hadoop or something, it was always a myth beyond uh, what Zookeeper had from Yahoo. And the Hadoop is from the uh, Jeff Dean's paper, which really shook the way in which big data was being perceived. And uh, Databricks is very very flexible. It has connectivity with hundreds of other services as well. So there's Kafka, uh, there is cognitive services, stream analytics, data factory, Power BI, Sy Synapse analytics, and things like that. And what does your Hadoop infrastructure do? Over the course of time, when you think of all these kinds of technologies which are coming in and, and they are giving you a chance to something like I can say something like you are getting hundreds of free resources, but some of them are lying without being optimized. Some of them are optimized, but yet there is a lot of requirement coming up. And what happened was Zookeeper was already there. Zookeeper had its own charm in the market where uh, big data was not being disrupted over a course of time. It had its own. So I think I can show you something as an architecture here, but I don't know whether you guys will be able to see this or not. I think this is your Twitter system, which is all about. Uh, I think if you guys can see me, this is your Twitter system. I think this is your Twitter's entire system architecture all about. I think we'll see. Can you like uh, stop the share screen and then just show me this one? Stop the share screen and I want this to be there. Like, yeah. You can remove yourself from the stream or something. It would be great. Yeah. Perfect. So this is how complex it is. But I would say, like, I'll show you one more. There is an architect. I forgot to put this on the slide. Sorry for that. This is Netflix. And there is always an ETL pipeline. There is a Cassandra data set. There are hundreds of moving components here and there. Theater ticketing, that's no big deal. This is Uber. And there's an entire ETL pipeline using PIG, HDFS, and things like that, which are coming here. So if you think of ETL pipelines, Elastic is doing pretty good in building that. But you know there are some Apache Rangers and the things like that. So you can go back to the screen. Those of time. If you think of all these kind of architecture, this is what they do. And all these components have their own charm in the market. Don't worry. There's something called as Apache Ranger, things like that. So this is what your Hadoop ecosystem was all about over a course of time. And when you think of Spark clusters, it's all about architecting every task and how much is the memory cache which has been laid out in terms of fetching the data, getting back to that. And I think there are some executor nodes which have RDD and MD. Okay. Let me just do that. RDD is something which is here. So primary user MDM is also the MDM and uh, data warehouse. I think I'll show you guys one more slide. It's on data lakes. So wait. Data lakes. Where are you data lakes here? 
Yes, this is the one. This is the one. Uh, wait, there is an architecture which I wanted to show. So wait. So today your entire architecture is this. You need not have to worry about the complexity of not having this kind of a technology. This technology is already there. This actually replaced the entire cluster and the uh, small things which you have. So all what you see about the task, cache, executors, it's all in there. And Spark SQL, Spark MLS, Spark Streaming Services, graphics was already there from the Spark. And I think the founder of the Spark really made a big charm. But founder of the Databricks had a huge impact because he bought ETL pipeline from being complex to just a piece of code, which is there. So that is where your core engine comes in, where you have an access to all the technologies, but yet in a form factor of a simple code snippet and then pushing it down to the ETL pipelines. And your YARN, MESO, standalone schedulers, everything is there. So if you want to know something beyond it, so these are the applications which are always there. So there is Thunder, there is Fume, Hive, Feather, a lot of things. There is deployment environments which works the same. If you think of Docker and Kubernetes, I've already given an example of how to run a Spark cluster using a Docker. So you guys can go there, check out what is it all about. And there are some data sources. There is HDFS, there are... There are HBase, there are Tachyon, there's Kafka, it's like streaming database. And if you think of streaming, it's like moving from a Kappa architecture where there was no streaming layer, everything was batched into pieces or bucketed, but now it's all real time. Kafka comes into the picture. And there are some review tools, CI CD pipelines, which can be used in the ML flow. Of course, this is auto ML, but I would say do using something like a notebook because that gives you a lot of insight. So I'll show you how it's all about, how the model registry works. And then we are coming up with a part three series where I don't know every series, I want to complete most of it. So probably four or five, I don't know, but we are sticking down to three itself. But if you want something more, I can do that. Don't worry for that. So this is what all about. So tracking server will be there where you have an entire server dedicated for uh, developer testing or staging. <coughs> and now there's a model which is registered and now it's working fine. And what your ML flow does in the real time world is something like, God knows, man, you know, you can build a model using TensorFlow, PyTorch, XGBoost, Keras, Scikit-learn, Spark ML. There are hundreds of it. But what ML flow does is it just creates a pathway for you to just deploy it over the course of time. And I'll show you why Docker, Kubernetes, Spark is always there. But mainly these are the kind of models which you can think of and run in one notebook and you can deploy it over a course of time and we'll do that. And what MLflow makes a lot of influences when you have a set of raw data which has to be wrangled, like wrangling is something like you're just changing the positions, you're just augmenting it over a course of time because you have lesser amount of data. But when you think of something huge, this doesn't come up at all. So there is training model, deployment, there is not just deployment, don't for, forget the fact that there is an existence of Docker and Kubernetes. There are hundreds of deployed tools like PyCaret, uh, PyCaret also takes help of all these kinds of technology that I'm talking here. And they make a pretty well usage of all these things. So let's just create a scenario because a lot of times this is what we think, but it's pretty complex. So you guys can think of this scalable hybrid architecture, things like that. These are, these are somewhere related to your big data plus the machine learning. So real time training, what is it all about? Like I can, I can give you an example. Before the pandemic, there was a different travel pattern and there was a different way in which people bought things and different way of computation. If you think of Uber, Uber has an amazing case studies on all these things. So we'll be coming to that and this thinks about what should be the next hybrid approach that we can be talking about. Whether you use Azure, AWS, GCP or anything, it's all about getting the right frameworks out from, from the production system. And everything is something not that cool. If you think of something like, hey, 
I'm going to deploy this model here, this model here. What's going to be the next future approach? It's never going to be the same because every time there is a new way of understanding the data sets, there's a new cycle which has to be designed. There's a new pipeline of code which has to be written. So I think it's taking time for me because there is a stream yard which is running here. So that doesn't make any matter. But let's think of uh, no, cloud energy micro, all these things, right? You know, whatever I am giving here, just study them. I'm not even joking. This is going to be the best thing that you can ever think about. Like I'll I'll do a Google Docs for it and I'll give you give it as a comment i'll give it in the comment section now, down there and you guys can think of doing it so let's just do that so it's google docs here so this i'm very sorry because i don't do this prayer because i have a lot of preparations to be done prior to coming to this session right so i forget to do this job and <laughs> now i'll be stuck so don't worry, I'll be giving it in the comment section so you guys can go there and check out what are all these all about. So, right. This data lakes, it's a secret to me also. So let me just do that. So serverless is wild, of course, serverless is wild. And what is it all about getting the right compute hardware to a next extent? And what is it all about when you are playing with the larger workloads over the data set, which is always streaming inside that system. So this is where your paper comes into the picture. This paper is actually a must read. So I'll not remove this tab, uh, this will be there. So I'll make sure that I'll share it with you guys. So if you think of SAS, IAS, IAC or something, this flash, which is coming up, you know, this is a 2020 paper. This is still in research, but hopefully, we all adapt very fast. This is pretty cool. When I see the potentials in the big data, Flash is actually amazing. So I think this paper is good. So let me just go back to the MapReduce paper. So wait. So th this are some of the examples which says, hey, this is how much we used to do in about mapping the data over this key, this string value. This is the amount of security patch that has happened. And what is it next? all about when we are batching it and just training it as a complete data set. And this actually answers all the questions. So uh, basically, I would say this really marked the trend for the big data because when, when you see Zookeeper, this is from the uh, University of Waterloo, I think so, University of Waterloo. That's what I thought. But like this is uh, this is actually from other source. I don't know that. But I'll make sure that uh, these are the ways in which they are, you call your RPC protocols, right? Request and the process controls and the things like that. So these mark the uh, beginning for all of this. What you are talking today about this RPC protocols, how much IP subnet, VNet, Zookeeper really made a thing. And if you think of something advanced, this FB Learner, those of you who didn't know, FB has an amazing AutoML platform, which is always here. So, and of course, Michelangelo is here. Michelangelo is doing pretty amazing in terms of what you can say, like uh, this actually marked the beginning for Spark-based AutoML platforms. And this was the first one which came out. And it's actually pretty old one. This article is probably somewhere around, I don't know, yeah, probably this is old, but I have heard Michelangelo during 2017 or something, 2017, 2018. I don't know, but uh, it was already present. And I think Uber has an amazing case studies, but I would say just go to uber.com, engineering, blogs, research paper, just study all of them. So Zookeeper and MapReduce, I think these are the two amazing paper. Kafka, oh, Kafka is from the Waterloo. So University of Waterloo is here. So when you think of the Kafka, Kafka has its own distributed called distributed systems and things like that. So there is a training pattern for everything. So if you see Neha Narkade's talk, she was there in LinkedIn before and there was a Kafka and now it's flavored as Confluent Kafka. She is now the CTO of Confluent. And 
LinkedIn marked the beginning of Kafka. Because I'll say one thing, LinkedIn was hosted as a pub sub prior. And now when you link, when you see the LinkedIn's performance, the way they are committing the code, there is an, there's a delivery of the product over hundreds of times in a day. So, yeah. So if you want some more insights, I did a podcast with John Willis and this is from Neelesh Gule, sir, amazing big data engineer. Check it, check his podcast. And uh, this podcast is a must watch and must hear because not because he was my guest, because he was an amazing engineer and I really love the fact that he was an amazing engineer and he literally gave a lot and lot of insights for me. Uh, and yes, yes, Vishwas. Actually, I also seen that podcast actually and it was really amazing and insightful. Yeah. If you can learn, just check it out. I just posting in the comment. Please, I should say check it out and there are amazing uh, podcast already there. Uh, with John and many John Willis and yeah, you know he is he is considered as one of the godfathers for the DevOps culture because yeah. Jeff Dean, John Collins, he they were the three pioneers for the cloud advocacy and cloud yeah, cloud <laughs> relations and things like that. So these were the best people. So you guys have to listen to them. And he talks amazing things about DevOps culture and the things like that. What I'll be doing here is probably what is being said in the podcast. That's it. So I think I'll be sharing you the slides too. Don't worry. So that's it, folks. Uh, let's just go on for some hands-on session. I think we are 22 minutes up with the theory part. So it's simple as that. So what you have to do is you have to go to the Azure Databricks or else you can go here, type in Azure Databricks and the things like that. So what you can do is you have to create it. So if you go and create it, it asks you for the resource group and the blah, blah, blah thing, which is always colloquial in all the services. So a resource group is a must and there's a name for it. Just put that. And what you get is this entire workspace, which is ready for you to build something new. And there are hundreds of ways in doing auto ML and the ML flow over here. But I would say choose one method. Whether you want programmatically, I'll be showing you both. Like it's all colloquial, man. You know, you need not have to worry about, hey, this is what is happening and things like that. You guys can go there, check out what is happening and uh, wait. I think to fire out, oh, it's already fired up. So let's not worry about that. And uh, perfect. So if you guys go there, there's an import and export of data. There's DBS, there's patterns. If you upload a file, there's a DBC format. I'll, I'll actually give this as a DBC format itself. So you guys can run it on community edition also. So DBC archive. So if you just import it, that will be available. And I'll be downloading it as an HTML file because I need it for my website. Perfect. I think I got my website also sorted now. So if you go there, there are some other sources. So let's not worry about that. So let's just go here, create a notebook. Let's say Vishwas demo dummy, because I'll be going to that notebook, right? So let's not waste one entire thing as a demo, which is already written there. So yes. And uh, what you can do is you can go to an experiment, you can uh, create a new, you can go here, make some new, or else you can go to the machine learning. What you can do is you have notebooks, you have this, that. What you can do is you can go back here, workspace, repos, experiments, create a new. And there is already a, already an experiment which is already done as a notebook, but I would say don't waste your time on that. There is already a compute cluster which is already running and things like that because I have already opened it, so it's not coming. So I would say like, just go here, create an auto ML experiment and experiment is here. So you guys can go check, check an experiment here. And you guys can just type in something like this and it will be created. And if you go to this experiment session, 
it's already created and what you have to do is you have to add this file or else you have to add this as an one thing so what i always insist you guys to do is do it programmatically i'll show you how it's all done it's it's pretty easy so if you do that auto ml experiments and the things like that still remains the same so don't worry about that so there's a notebook here so this is actually a trial notebook which i referred and this is already there in the one and you guys can go check it out but it's on a different data set but i'm doing on sk learns diabetes data set the old pima india data set is different this diabetes data set is different this has nine different matrices so what i did was simple what i did was there is an matplotlib for the pi plots and i wanted some plots so what i did was i did that and i have some sk learn data set math square root i just download all of it so this is not a basics of python so you have to bear with me for i think you can make it full screen so that people can see the notebook entirely like full screen mode would be great so and this is it folks so what you can think of is you can what you can do has a hard work is you can go to the documentation and listen to it not listen read it or you can take my notebook because everything has been explained here but i forgot to write some comments sorry for that because a lot of things man you know i forgot i forget to write some comments and this is what it is so that is there and what you have is when you do the pip list the amazing feature about this is there is already a docker installed and if you think of jk so kiwi solver there is this pretty much everything that you require but sometimes you know what happens sometimes the compute cluster might not have that capability because you might be choosing a non gpu version or something like that so what you can do is you can go here choose the compute cluster which has been shown here and you can go to the libraries install new and there is a pypy package and what you can do is you can do that or else you can upload your wheel file that's there so you can do it from the adls also cran job obviously works maven is just for your java and things like that but i would say don't go for the maven thing but pypy is pretty amazing so do that so i i tried to install h2o.ai but it was not compatible for this so i just wanted to show you that h2o is what i require h2o.ai is like advanced and i have not learned it sorry for that folks because i didn't have much time i'm an easy folk and then let's just go on with this uh where is this oh demo notebook it's here so i started off here it's going well so what happens is i want to set an experiment right so what i did was even you can do one two here i'll say you how you do one two here you run this and there will be a new experiment created and if you go to this experiment stwala tab you will see there is an ml flow experiments here so it's there in this location and if you want to add this as that and you can go on and add it as who that actually really missed it but let's uh, let it be like that so you guys can add that and you guys can create then wonderful notebook which is there already available for you guys and perfect you guys can uh, go here check back this notebook now this is still an auto ml experiment so don't worry about that right here where are you yeah it's here only so you guys can just change that experiment because why i'm saying you it's an experiment because I did a podcast with somebody called as Ashish Raj. He is there in the AZDev dot community, and you know what? He literally told DevOps is a kind of an experiment which is unleashed, and he has an amazing book. Read that with Ashish Raj, right? He's the one. Uh, he's the one. So Ashish Raj, sir, he told about experimentation with the DevOps. and he is a pretty good ml ops devops professional and you guys can go check his profile he is an amazing engineer like if you guys really want to learn something 
Ashish Raj is the best person to go reach out to. So, yes. So what happened was there was a new experiment that I copied right now. So I'll paste it here. So if you can see that, oh, and here, fine. I don't know where it gets copied and what happens to this all of this. Oh, it's so, oh, sorry for that. And it still remains the same. So let's not waste time on that. So there is already a done. So what I do is experiment three. So it creates a new experiment and uh, yeah, perfect. What I can do is one, three, four. It created a new experiment. It's there in this folder and things like this. And it created everything. So I run this and it will get saved there. And this is a pretty amazing tool. You know what? I'll show you what has been done in the previous experiments then. All right. So this has been already run. I think so. But I'll show you that experiment actually. That experiment actually shook me away from all the things. Like I ran it like many times before the session. So there are some matrices. There are the models that I built. There are no models, but there are some matrices here. And this tool is, I'm not even joking. If you guys can really go on with the studying this tool, I think probably it's going to take you an entire lifetime to just get to know what is this Databricks all about. And do reach out to us like if you have any doubts and queries so that we will be able to get some things for you guys. And perfect. So that was that experiment that I ran. And this has a new experiment right now. Wait. All right. So now there is already an experiment which is created. I think it's going to give me there was a created experiment. Yeah, this is all. Oh, why did this come up, man? So you, you can schedule it. You can get it. You also can have an version control. We'll be showing it in the future session. So there is always a run which is happening. And if you run all these, right? So this will now be a new experiment. If you do that, so there were nine, nine columns and many rows. And here you have only nine features that has been listed. Like there is no name for it. There's no head and tail for it. So you guys can think about how difficult is it to architect a solution using all these tools that we have today. So that is where your Spark comes into the picture. So it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. You guys want to do that, check out. And it's the, still the same old NP axis, Y and Z, how we are manipulating it, how the slicers, this is the spli slicer operation. How is it happening? It's taking a, just go and pass all the things and there's new X axis and Y axis and things like that. So you guys can pass it on. So there is always a run function, which is always there. So your ML flow always has this start dot run. And there is a diabetes.data and there is a second idea, third idea and things like that. So if you guys want to check it out, so it's better that you just experiment around with it because I'll show you how it is working. And if you think of something like this, there's an entire function which has been written and a lot of things, you know, these matrices are pretty amazing. And if you look at my other notebooks, I've also done the same thing, but in a different form factor, but different tools and their techniques and this works and this still really works and if you go back here click on this experiment it will go for a new experiment it will show me what has been ran what has what are the matrices that, that i'm looking for and the things like that so you can see that so oh since it went for the old experiment. So there is a new experiment which has been done. So there is an SQL learn module. I'll show you what it is all about in the next few minutes and things like that. So there is SVM, SVC and things like that. SVM support vector machine lad. Uh, it's uh, Vitalik, Vitalik and also if you think of uh, Jorgen Schmiduber's LLVMs and things like that, they are pretty cool, man. You know, Jorgen Schmiduber 
Shmiduber is actually an amazing scientist. Vitalik gave you the SVM. So think about all these scientists who have gave you this formula, and now SK Learn has it all in the type of code. So if you guys can go and run this, and you guys can see that how you can fool a model. Also, if I can go here, click on this experiment, you guys will see that. Oh, I clicked it twice. Big mistake. Not a big mistake. It will, it's just a computer which takes command. That's it. So there is an expert tab. It goes back to the experiment one. And it says that you can continue from wherever you are. And you know, I just told alpha is equal to 0 0.1 and that got logged. <laughs> that really got logged. And if you want anything like uh, a matrix or something, what you can do is you can Mm, we can go for this prediction values. Like, let me just show you how this is also. But let me say how it's there. So, it's all about this. And predict. So, I think it will run and it doesn't give me an error. It should not give me error because I ran it perfectly. So if you go back here, it takes time. I don't know why since I've connected to StreamYard or something, but it takes time. So wait for it. So it ran successfully. There's no error. So it will come. Don't worry for that. All right. Model registry and all will do that. The regular one. Oh, okay. I'm not using my hotspot, but fine. So now there is one linear regression matrices and things like this. Wait. This is pretty cool. And there are some matrices, alpha values already been taken and there is uh, no error here. So perfect. It's working. So right now, let's just go to the H2O demo. This is actually there from the MLflow uh, repository that I took. And if you can see that, you can see the magic of this. It runs very quick now. This took a lot of time, but now it will run very quick. So since there is a received command and everything, so it didn't show you that yaml.dump but you if you can do that there is an yaml.safe dump option which is also available for you guys so you guys can do that and check out what is all about so if you do some ls.la so what what are the file systems which are already present here and things like that so if you have an error right so mlflow.utils that's a different story and you don't have to mess around with that one because that's going to be awesome horribly awesome and if you do that, I think probably this will start working now because I've already registered it. But I don't want to do TensorFlow now because TensorFlow, if I want to write a demo for that, it's going to take me a long time. HKLearn, like everything is almost there in the documentation. So just fine tuning here and there, it starts working. So there is random forest, mean squared error. If you guys want, check out other models also. So I've given you the options there. So if you guys can do that, that would be great. So there are some N estimators. There are some, if you can click on this experiment, right? There's no model, I think so, because I didn't register any model here. Yes, there is no model registered here. I think there will be no model here. Yes, I didn't have a model there also. Oh, I can just refresh that old one. So that would be awesome. It's taking a lot of time. Okay, fine. There is there's a model which has been saved from the previous run, but now it, it will be there. And if you go here and if you say what's the residual and things like that, there is an matrices, there is plots here, but the plots will be stored in a different file formats. Last time when I showed you the DBFS, but now let's just do what has been marked here. And I'll just refresh this probably. So there is an sklearn model. So there is an H2. So now there's an sklearn model which comes up because I ran the recent one here. So 
there was an H2O model which was already there. Now it's an SKL learn model. So this is perfect actually. So I'll show you how the model registry works and the things like that. So wait for it, folks. I don't want you to experiment. Go out. And this is actually the last demo where I'm taking some uh, uh, already Bayesian regression, ridge regressions, and linear regression models, which are already built. And I'm trying to uh, go through all these matrices. If I run this, we'll see that there will be a model stored, but there will be no matrices which will be coming. And this is what I really wanted to show you guys. And hopefully this these things will start working with you folks as well. And I'll just refresh it. The refresh will be working here. So let's not waste time. So there is a model here and there's nothing. So simple as that, you don't have to worry about anything. So it was done 70 seconds ago. So. So you click on this model and it, it pops up a new tab and it will say everything about the model. What is the matrices which has been collected? What are this? What are that? And it gives you an every pretty little insights about everything that you really want to have. And it will give you an already logged in codes which are already there. And this is more useful for deployment as well. And if you want some more file systems, there will be some more file systems here. You guys can check it out. And if you want to use the same old model, which has already been built, and if you want to do it for other stuff, like you guys can go register this model as, let me say, uh, create new model, model name, Vishwas Narayan. Sorry for that typo. So it's already registered. So model registry, if you go there, so there is a way in which you can really go on with all these things. So it's already registering right now. So it's taking time registration pending. So what it gives you is a way in which you can really go and deploy all these model pickles requirements and everything. So. I think that's it, folks, you know, just reach out to those folks that I told and also make sure that you guys have some questions to ask and the things like that. So we can start working on that. And this is the same old model which has been given. So it's still the same old version controls and all these. And this will give you what is this all prediction all about and description of it, input and output. There is a tensor type, tensor D type. What is it all about? Run ID. This is a hash value which has been generated. So on. So if you can think of the schema, schema still remains the same. Tax are something which is used for people who have an access to this model and the things like that. So registration pending. So it takes a lot of time, folks. It takes a lot of time, but we have to wait for that so that there is an increase in it. So by the time it's doing, so let me talk about the FB Learner. FB Learner is from Facebook. Just like their PyTorch, they're pretty cool. I think I would just love to say, learn about this person called as Justin Johnson, PyTorch. Tutorial, so... He is under Fei Fei Li, one of the top notch engineers that I met in computer vision virtually. I didn't meet her in person, but virtually, she's one of the greatest scientists that I ever saw. And he's working under her. If you want, you can go and Fei Fei Li. E PhD thesis. Ah, this is the one. That thing is all about your perception, right? She didn't Caltech. I'm not even joking. This is a must read thesis. If you guys get a chance, go read it. Like it's all about like you are watching in, watching a movie for 500 milliseconds, but you are able to say a lot of insights. And that is what our PhD thesis was all about. And that thesis is fab. I think uh, if you have time, guys can go and do Lex Friedman PhD thesis. 
it's a brilliant pc he's from drexel university and an amazing professional who has an amazing podcast like me itself like he started it much more earlier but amazing professionals folks like just go if you guys can just read this fefe lee's thesis i would be very happy if you guys can read it this are these are some of the masterpieces in the world of ai deep learning what you are talking today right so Uh, it's actually a pretty less one but this is actually the best thesis that you can learn so learning of identity and behavior of biometrics for active authentication so this is all about uh, lex fridman and fefe lees oh my god man you know i can't really express my gratitude for giving such a masterpiece to the world i think this is a must read one I think Justin Johnson is probably out from his PhD right now. I think so. If not, hell. So he is also there in the University of Michigan, and he is working on a fairly amazing researcher. So yeah, that's it, folks. I think model registry. If it has been done, I will go on with the registry. Oh my God! Oh Lord! Staying a lot of time, but. this is what you get as a matrix so input and output and things like that i think uh, you all have your own festival to explore right so that's it folks from my side nothing else let yes vishwas i think you are on mute no i am not on mute okay now your voice is coming uh yeah So Vishwas, there was some question in the chat box also. Should I ask? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. So, ah, uh, Yash is saying that how to start Kafka. Kafka. It means you start. You are talking about starting the Kafka cluster, or is is it about like? Ah, uh, I don't know, but yeah, he just Kafka. said that how to start. Like how to learn. I think he was asking oh, how right, to learn. Oh, right, right. Learn probably yes. Kafka is no big deal. I'll say you what. Kafka is something just like take data ticketing hard. Wait, I'll show you that. It's like you have hundreds of jobs and how to synchronize jobs with hundreds of people inside your own organization. So there was a rabbit MQ cluster here. Yeah, there is a rabbit MQ cluster here where you are supposed to. Uh, Undergo the complexity of analyzing. Okay, this is what is happening in your entire uh, infrastructure. So you need a calf, rabbit MQ, a Docker, Docker image, and you have to run this, run that, and it's a an hectic thing. But what happens when you see Uber architecture is something which is cool? They use Kafka, they use Spring, they use high HDFS, not high. Wait. So there is logs here, which is happening. so logs from all different sources and all different things comes in and there is an elk stack which is already there which is doing all the analysis in the real time and things like that so if you want to really learn kafka start with the understanding of what is really required by you today like i would say like you want a purpose where hundreds of jobs have been uh, distributed for hundreds I of think, people i uh, think he's also asking that uh, like how to start means what are the resources i believe ah resources resources so resources are something which is done like you need to know how to program a little bit in java and the things like that then later on you can go on with some architecture like where are they fitting in this architecture i think i had this data ticketing system i don't know where is it lost today but sorry my room is so shabby um, <laughs> i can't help that you know like i lose a lot of things man oh <laughs> like, this, this, this is like the whatsapp architecture wait i'll say you what there is hundreds of web sockets here there are hundreds of connectors and now when you think of such kind of a workloads there is a redis cluster which is acting over but that doesn't make any sense but when you have a kafka this is an organized being so get to know that purpose next you need to start with the installation don't go for the hassle of installation just go with a docker image that would be obviously great for you guys to really understand what it is all about and then 
just get to know some kafka commands and things like that that really makes a lot of sense to you and afterwards just make sure that you understand where is it fitting and how can i really do it and that's it folks kafka is done kafka is no big deal by the way kafka is like kafka has a great story but it was may it was built to make our lives easier so respect that fact that's it yeah so i think you yes, should understand how that how to start with that and uh, vishwas i want to ask about that uh, can you share the resource for zookeeper as you zookeeper. show yeah 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 i'll i'll send it in the comment section down here so anybody who is just wanting to just go back and study that i'll give that but for now i'll give the zookeeper i zookeeper and map reduce i think i gave for map reduce right i didn't give for zookeeper uh you haven't give for map reduce you have given like free free pdf Definitely, you have, yeah yeah you ha- so, yeah you haven't give about this is ma- this is zookeeper this is map reduce okay so i'll give it in a, i'll give it in the comment section down below so that you guys can get to know okay this is what i talked all the session all about so it's a pretty good list of papers so don't worry folks if you can yeah, read it that would be all. great Sure, sure, sure. Perfect. Yeah, I should do that. Thank you so much, and, folks. Thank you so much. Yeah, and yeah. if you want to connect with Vishwas or me, you can connect. Just uh, we have in the description section, and the important links uh, links are in live chat, and some of the link will uh, Vishwas will put in the comment section. So I sure. hope you liked it, and I would request Vishwas to have such more session on like data breaks, logic apps, so we all can get this out. and uh, yes thank you for fox for joining okay, and okay, one second one second yeah i am so for kafka which i always refer back to this is from a linkedin post which is from neha okay. narkade herself neha narkade herself oh. wrote this and what is this kafka all about you know confluent is doing pretty amazing if you think of something like uh, audi Audi uses Kafka for streaming in their sensor data, their automobiles data to their server, and it has a lot of potential. So, if you want to know something beyond what Kafka is, reach out to me personally, and that's it, folks. That's it from my side. Yeah. So I would say uh, you can subscribe to our channel of the Azure Developer Community and, and do check the channel. <laughs> when you are not evangelized it right uh what uh, what is short telegram telegram channel telegram channel yeah uh, can uh, can you send the link yeah it's ac day of india it's uh, at ac day okay. of india so it's there i think you have joined right okay yeah. so fox we have a new uh, telegram channel of ac day of india you can check it out you can connect on twitter linkedin uh, that that to our uh, we are earlier there but telegram is the new one we will update all the things like we have the sessions and other many stuff there so it would be really amazing and you can interact with us and all yeah. so i would say do subscribe the azure developer community and the channel uh, of, and do check that john will they will uh, session with uh, vishwash john willis yeah john will okay willis sorry john willis <laughs> Yeah. podcaster he gave an amazing insight so just go check it out folks that's it so thank you yeah. so much we'll see thank you so much folks thank you everyone bye bye